Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be checking out the um, high availability options that we have for free radius. So we'll be exploring the options of high availability and I'm going to show you kind of the different options and what it all looks like within free radius. So first of all, let's take a look at high availability um, and what that is. It is the elimination of single points of failure to enable applications to continue to operate even if one of the components um, like a server or a network device fails. So um, let's take a look here at what Radius is. If you don't know already, uh, Radius is the remote authentication um, dial in user service. In layman's terms, essentially, it's just taking something like Active Directory and putting that into a different format that is supported by other types of um, applications. So it is a network server, um, access server that authenticates and authorizes users and devices to access a network. So a lot of people use it for Wi Fi. Um, I've made videos in the past using free radius and VLAN authentication for Wi-Fi networks. It's a great option. This is kind of the first option I've came up with. This is redundancy at the network level. So I'm going to show you a diagram here. So this is kind of what this looks like right here. So essentially you'll have two or more um, servers and you'll have a floating IP address in between them. So that IP address is going to fail over um, when the server crashes or that kind of thing or if the server goes offline. The IP address is going to fail over to an alternative server and you can kind of weight them and give them priorities. Um, if you're using something like Keep Alive D, which I've talked about in the past, um, you can weight them, like I said, with the priorities. Um, and then from the radius point of view, your radius server is going to be using the floating IP address and you'll fill that into your radius client. So let's take a look here, re uh, redundancy at the radius client level. So this is kind of from the perspective of the radius client. Some clients actually allow you to map multiple servers into your configuration. So example, um, on Ubiquity, Unify, you can do this. Um, you can you can have one profile made for the um, radius server, and you can fill in multiple radius servers. Um, they all have to have the same password and stuff, which is fine. But if you sync free radius in between two servers, um, you can use some kind of SQL um, or SQL. You can use you can use replication in SQL to make that happen. <coughs> so you can essentially link free radius to a SQL database and sync that in between two different servers. So then from the radius client, you'll just map both of them and you're going to assume that they always have the same config. It's not ideal, but it's an option. Okay, so the last one here is redundancy at the request level. So an example of this is if you were to have some kind of proxy that sits in between your radius servers and your client, so from the client's perspective, you would fill in just the proxy IP address, and then the proxy, something like Nginx, would load balance or round robin or something. It would um, then send that to the upstream radius server of the choice. Um, <coughs> this works, but it would get complicated if you're doing, if you care about the types of sessions and stuff that radius stores. Um, specifically free radius it does store data and I think they call it accounting it stores accounting data in the in the radius server that essentially um, keeps track of the user's data usage session time etc so that's something that would be confusing if you're doing a proxy solution like this but again it works and it's an option so what do you think um, this is something that I'm kind of just throwing out there and trying to see feedback uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. Um, if you want to see any of these options in action, if you want to see how they actually work, leave a comment down below. I'm happy to make a video about any of this stuff. I just wanted to kind of discuss the different options available because I feel like it's a topic that doesn't get discussed too much within Free Radius specifically. So I can say that I do use this option quite frequently, and it totally works. Um, I don't really like um, the failing over part because... Sometimes it takes the router a little bit to finally realize that the radio server is not working. So this one is not great, but it's probably better than the option number one. The problem with option number one is that the floating IP address could be working, but the free radio server itself running on the computer or the virtual machine, whatever, that might be the issue. And the IP address wouldn't necessarily know to look for the radio server to be online for it to be able to get the IP address. So Essentially, you could run into a scenario where the radius server itself crashes, but the virtual machine is online, and the IP address would still live on the one with the crashed server because it doesn't know to fail back over to the backup. 
since this is purely based on is the virtual machine up or down and then it assigns the IP address accordingly. Lastly, I've never tried this one. Um, I've heard good things about it. I don't know how well it would also work with failover like I, just like the previous example, um, but it is absolutely an option and it could be a pretty easy one because then you don't have to port forward a ton of ports for your radio server. If you're hosting it externally or internally, you can just allow access through the firewall to one IP address that's the same for the floating IP address as well. So just a few different uh, points I wanted to add there. But yeah, that's pretty much it for, um, for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'm happy to hear your thoughts, and I want to hear what you have to say about this. So thanks for watching. Have a great day. I will see you in the next video.